Hello, I'm back. And what that means is, of course, we've had some more information from the bishop. Um, Wednesday he did a webinar um, and did some more talking about the coronavirus. So I want to share all of that with you. Um, and you may have heard, you'll hear a lot of things. One of the things he's done, he's done a lot of lifting of things in terms of what the diocese says we have to do. And he's leaving a lot of things up to pastors. Part of the reason for that is every parish is so different. The church buildings are so different that for him to make rules is really hard um, that, are, that are specific for the different places. So I have, after listening to what he said, we ha I've talked to the staff and we have made some decisions about what we're going to do, at least right now, and then moving into the future slowly. Um, and I had mentioned that to you already, that we were going to kind of do it slowly. Um, but the bishop has kind of had to speed up a little bit. Um, so let me, just, let me just say there's a couple of things. One, we are going to stop live streaming during the, on weekdays. So Monday through Saturday morning, there will be no live streaming and no communion after Mass. Because so many people are vaccinated, um, because the church is so big and people can sit for daily Mass, you know, very separate, um, we don't feel, we feel that there's no need to keep doing the live streaming and we want to pull people back into the Mass, get you used to <laughs> coming to Mass again instead of watching it. Um, we will continue to live stream the Sunday 11 o'clock Mass and there will be communion after the, that Mass. Okay, we'll continue to do that. Um, hopefully people be, are coming back. They are, we found that, especially Easter was just beautiful. Um, so Sunday will live stream but no, and communion afterwards, but no other. And this is all with the bishop's permission. This is, you know, what they are advising us um, to do or allowing us to do. Um, communion on the tongue, those of you that prefer to receive on the on the tongue, um, we're going to allow. We're going to say that you can go to either of the center aisle stations on Sunday. Okay, either of the center aisle stations instead of just to the priest. It could be either one, and we'll have a clean station um, set up on both sides. Okay. Um, in terms of masks, we we had a long discussion. We remember that we have a very diverse community. We have some elderly people, even if they have been vaccinated, they're still nervous. Um, and some of them still not coming to Mass because they're so nervous. Um, we also have a lot of children, and our children, of course, can't be vaccinated yet. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're requiring masks in the buildings. So in the church, or if you go to any event, over in the hall um, or classrooms, um, masks are still required. Now we are going to continue to monitor this and look at it. So we know that they're going to be, eventually we're going to get rid of them, but at least for now um, we want to keep that going for the sake of those people um, that are vulnerable and that are nervous. You know, we, we want to do ministry to them. All of us want to take care of them. So I'm asking basically requiring um, that we do masks in the church and in the uh, buildings. Outside the church, even though the bishop used to say it was the whole property we we're supposed to do masks, he has lifted that, and so especially um, for I'm lifting it too. So once you're outside the church, when you're in the pro on the property, masks are not required. Um, and I think that's, this is, that is still the recommendation of the CDC, that is still the strong recommendation of Governor Ducey. He lifted the mandate, but he strongly recommended masks. And it is the same with the bishop. He has lifted the mandate, but he's strongly recommending. And so we are going to follow those recommendations and continue with masks. And I know that's disappointing, but we do it for the sake of those um, who are vulnerable. And we don't want to leave, um, cause them undue concern. Uh, but we will, I promise you, we will continue to monitor that, um, not weekly, but at least by the beginning of May, we'll monitor again. But anytime the staff meets, we'll talk about it, okay?
We have removed some more tape from pews, but there are still areas taped off. So those of you that are concerned about sitting too close and everything, there are still areas in the church that are taped off. And um, so you can find those areas. And yet there are areas where, even though we want you to be careful um, in terms of physical distancing, family groups and, and neighbors and people who, who are together a lot may be sitting together. And we're seeing that already. Um, so we want to op we open the church up a little bit more. Um, and then I trust you because you have done really well. The bishop was very clear that one of the reasons he is he was, has lifted all the mandates is because he, what he saw at Easter, that the churches were doing so well, that the people were doing so well, that's you, um, that he said, okay, I'll leave it up to pastors. You know, so I, we thank you for that. So we've removed the tape on some of the pews. There were still some of the pews taped off. There will be no communion in the cup. And the bishop said that may be the last thing that comes back. Um, so there's no communion in the cup still. Um, we cannot do that. Um, some of you know, if you've seen, watched um, any of the live stream masses so far, um, we have been given permission to do the sign of peace for everyone. Now we ask that you, I'm asking that you not go out of the pew or anything. You turn around to the people around you, but not, no moving around. Um, but we are do, now already doing the sign of peace, um, which is really nice. Um, the, also, the bishop has said we cannot pass the basket for collection. So collection um, will still be done as you enter the church or leave the church. Um, there'll be baskets there or people with baskets um, for your offerings. Um, and especially as we open up more, this is going to get more and more important. You have been very generous, and we've been able, God's, you know, God has blessed us, and we've been able to stay, do pretty well financially. But as we open up, for instance, our utility bills are going to start going up and all of that. So please um, continue to look at your tithing um, and um, be as generous as you can be. That's, that becomes really important um, as we open up. Um, we can now have food in um, the hall. We can't use the kitchen yet, but we can have food. We cannot do buffet, so we'll have things have to. If we're going to do food, it has to be plated already and then given out. Um, and so we're, we've talked through that, and we know how to do that. And of course, the good news is we have found a way to do coffee and donuts. And so coffee and donuts will be back, not this week, um, but the next week um, we should be starting coffee and donuts. Um, so we hope to. So, um, and if anybody would like to help with that, um, call the office. Um, we'd be happy to um, put you in touch with the people that are running it. So, because we can all, this is that time when we're going to start needing liturgical ministers and we'll start having training sessions for new ones. As we open up, our needs become greater too. Um, including things like coffee and donuts. So, um, and coffee and donuts will be, of course, in the hall. Um, ministers of care, all ministers of care can go out now to any place that allows you in. You do have to wear masks. Whether the place requires it or not, we require you to wear masks when you go give communion to the sick. Um, but we can now do, that's totally opened up now, which is, again, a help. Um, finally, the bishop also has asked, I've got a couple other things, and the bishop wanted us to remind you all that he has put out an apostolic exhortation, Venerum Cernui, um, and it's on, it's on the diocesan website. Um, but it has to do with the Eucharist, and he's holding up the Eucharist and holding up our Sunday obligation. Now, he has still dispensed the Sunday obligation. Okay, so you still, if something happens, you can't make Mass on Sunday, that's, it's not sin. He has, he's dispensed that obligation for now, but of course that's something that will change shortly. Um, and that's why we're continuing um, live streaming on Sunday and why we're... Um, offering communion after the 11 o'clock Mass. But 
he would like people to really read through. It's a beautiful document. Um, it talks about a whole lot of things that some of you learned when you were young and kind of a slowly we've just gotten away from. Um, and it's good, maybe time to look at those and come back. And so there's a whole lot in there that we, he would like you to, everybody to read and take care, um, be aware of and, and work on. Um, we do have a blood drive coming up this weekend. Um, so that's very important. That's why we can't do coffee and donuts this weekend because it's already booked in the hall. Um, so, um, but we do have a blood drive. And of course, during this pandemic, that's been a big issue. So we're having our second one during the pandemic, um, second blood drive during the pandemic. I'm trying to help out um, those that need the blood. One of the things we have planned in terms of welcoming people back, one of the things we've gone through is, and, and I, having been with you, many of you have lost loved ones during the pandemic, whether through the coronavirus or through other causes. Okay, But for a while there, we couldn't have funerals of more than 10 people. And then that got expanded some, but funerals were so limited. And I know some of you don't even know that some of our parishioners have died. You know, and so we plan, we're planning on having a memorial mass for all who have died, coronavirus or not. Um, and we're planning, right now we're planning it on May 8th. It'll be a Saturday morning um, at 11 o'clock. Um, and we'll have what we plan on doing right now, and it fi we haven't finalized everything yet. We'll keep in touch with you. But um, we're planning on a memorial mass. Anybody can come to it. We want to celebrate those people, all the family members and friends that we've lost during this pandemic time. Um, and then we'll probably have like coffee and donuts um, over in the hall. And we're going to have tables set up. So a lot of you that have family members, especially parishioners who've died, to bring a picture. And we'll just set them up on these ta on tables so that people can remember them. Where they couldn't come to the funeral to remember them, they, we can at least celebrate their life in this way. So we want to celebrate all those lives that we have lost um, during the, this pandemic time. Um, and in the same way, then welcome us back as a community together. Um, so this is, we're planning on doing this May 8th. Um, right now. There is a funeral that might be scheduled that day and if that happens because funerals take priority then we'll have to move it back a little bit um, but we'll let you know. But just know in May we plan on doing this. Um, and then we also have, we've all during this pandemic we've talked, to, we haven't talked a lot about it but um, we've continued to work on the rectory, um, a place for Father Simon and I to live um, a place to have seminarians for the summer um, or even for a year if they're taking a year off, um, a place for retired priests or visiting priests to stay. And so um, we, we now have plans at the city um, so that we're going through the first review. I'm told that that takes two or three reviews to get through and somebody told me that it probably takes longer to get through the city than it does to build the building. Um, but anyway, we're beginning that process, and you'll be hearing more and more about that. Um, of course, we're going to have to do some fundraising, um, and I'm beginning that process a little bit right now, um, but that'll just slowly, we'll slowly bring it out, and I'll keep you up to date. You'll have a chance to look at the plans and all of that as we, as we move ahead. There's been other, so many other priorities that we've just kind of put that on the back table, kept working on it, but not necessarily making it a big issue for you yet, um, but that is coming. Um, and I want to make you aware of that as well. I want to thank you for all that you've done during this pandemic time. It's been um, very emotional. Um, I know there's been pain. I know there's even been anger. Um, the, the mass of Easter was like a family reunion. It was just amazing. People were out in the plaza talking after mass, laughing, joking, groups of people, you know, it was just, it was so wonderful to see everybody beginning to come back together. Um, and I continue almost every Sunday to hear from people, this is the first time I've been back in a year. You know, I keep hearing that over and over. Um, and, it's, and people are just so, so thrilled and so happy. Those of you that 
are not back yet. I understand. Please know that we're doing everything we can to make it comfortable for you, to make it safe for you. We continue to sanitize the church. Um, but whenever you're ready, believe me, we are ready for you to come back. Um, and so are all your friends. So as soon as you feel comfortable, please know that we, we welcome you back. One other thing I forgot to mention was um, we are moving confessions back into the church, back into the confessionals, and that begins this weekend. It begins tomorrow, Saturday. So both confessionals will be open, um, and because so many of you are now coming to confession, which is a wonderful thing, um, we um, will have two priests for confession. Um, that's the plan right now every Saturday um, from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, so please be there in time to finish by 4.30 because especially the priest who um, has Mass has got to have time to get ready. But anyway, we are moving that back into the church as well. We are not doing holy water on the side, the little holy water fonts on the side doors yet. Um, because We have permission to do it, but I, it's still I, it's not quite safe. And so that's one of the things we'll look at and it'll return, but... Um, not yet. We're not doing that yet. So there's a number of issues still ahead of us, um, but the end is not just in sight. We're beginning to experience the end. Um, I hope that you're all getting vaccinated. Um, if you're open to that, um, it really does help us open up. Um, and we'll begin to develop whatever the new normal, that's a new phrase now, the new normal, um, whatever that new normal is going to be, um, that's, we're beginning to realize what that is in development. Um, so thank you very much. I want to thank the staff um, because they're so helpful, the parish council, the finance council during this whole time. Both have been just incredible um, as guides for me. Um, so um, I tell everybody, I, this is not all about me. The decisions are all not about what I think and feel, but it's, I get a lot of input, and that's, that's really important from those three organizations or those three boards the staff, the parish council, and the finance council. So I really want to thank them. And I hope that we can all celebrate together soon. Um, I look forward to seeing you all again. And when I say I look forward to seeing you all again, I just don't mean in the building. I mean in the building without masks where I can begin to recognize you. I've been joking with people, with some friends even, that I was here for a few months and just beginning to get to know people. And then everybody started walking around like this. I didn't know who anybody was again. So it would be great to start getting to know you all again in reality. Take care. God bless. Know that you're all in our prayers. Thank you.